Hi, I'm Craig from Greenwich Films, and welcome to Greenwich's Script Tips, the place where new writers can learn all about script writing and what elements need to go into their stories and scripts. We'll be looking at everything from how to structure your scripts through index cards, how to write certain themes into your stories, and what makes a good script. So if you want to keep up to date with what we're going to be talking about, hit that subscribe button. In our first post of a series of script writing tips, we will be analysing the storytelling technique called intention and obstacle. This is where good drama comes from. Intention and obstacle are the heart of creating conflict in a story. They have to be strong enough for your story to make sense. Everything in your story has to relate to the intention and the obstacle. It's perfectly acceptable to have multiple intentions and or multiple obstacles, but you must have at least one of each, otherwise you're not storytelling. If there's no intention or obstacle, then there's no drama, no tension, no conflict. What you'll be writing will be journalism. The intention has to be strong enough for it to work in your story. What makes it so important or so urgent that it has to happen at a certain time, at a certain place, or doing a certain thing? Again, the obstacle has to be formidable enough for it to present a challenge for your protagonist to overcome it. If there are easy ways to get around the obstacles, then your audience is going to lose interest and the story isn't going to go anywhere. Once the obstacle is introduced, that's when the story starts to get moving. It's not required that your protagonist overcomes their obstacles, the drama comes from them trying to overcome it. You can either introduce the intention and obstacle straight away, or gradually introduce them throughout your story, it doesn't really matter. Your protagonist only needs to confront them in a way you think is best for them to do it. For example, in a thriller, it might be best for it to be gradual. Your protagonist is wanting to rob a bank, and they've done the research in what they're going to be coming up against. They've got to first sneak past a security guard. Once they've got past the security guard, they've now got to get into the vault, which has got a security system which they need to hack into to get past it. Once they get into the vault, there's lasers or something else from stopping them from getting the gold. These are a series of obstacles which is stopping them from getting what it is that they're wanting to achieve. We're going to look at some examples of character intentions across a variety of genres, as this storytelling technique is universal. These examples that we're going to look at will be The Social Network, Inception, The Hangover, The Truman Show, Shutter Island, and finally Moneyball. So firstly, The Social Network, written by Aaron Sorkin. The intention of The Social Network is Mark Zuckerberg wants to fit in with all the other Harvard students. There are multiple obstacles that confront Mark in his pursuit of popularity through a website. There's competitors, there's lawsuits, there's fundraising issues. Will Mark be able to create a website where he can control who's popular once the lawsuits and competitors start appearing? Next, in Inception, written by Christopher Nolan, Dom Cobb wants to see his kids again. Again, there are multiple obstacles stopping Cobb from seeing his kids. After a failed extraction mission at the start of the film, he can't return to the US for fear of extradition. He's then presented with an opportunity to have his record wiped if he's able to successfully perform Inception. His attempts to be successful are threatened by various obstacles within Fisher's dreams as well as his own mind turning against him. Will Cobb be successful in performing Inception so he can return home to see his kids? Now, The Hangover, written by John Lucas and Scott Moore, the intention is Doug and his friends want to go to Vegas for his bachelor party the weekend before his wedding. Now, The Hangover has a great use of obstacles here. The first obstacle is Doug goes missing on his bachelor party and his friends are too drunk to remember what happened and where he, where he is. It creates a secondary intention of having to find Doug before his wedding, which is obstructed by various factors. The gaps in their memory, getting arrested for stealing a police car, being, being unable to work out a timeline of events from the night, having to return Mike Tyson's tiger back to him, having to spend the night in a casino to, spend 80, to get $80,000 in order to win back Doug, only to then find out it isn't the correct Doug. Will Phil and the gang be able to find Doug and get him home in time for his wedding? In The Truman Show, written by Andrew Nichol, Truman Burbank wants to explore the world. 
Now, The Truman Show has a clever use of obstacles in the fact that the audience is aware from the off what the obstacle is, but the character isn't, and this is something that the character must work out if they are to be successful in their intention. Truman faces the ultimate obstacle, as he is actually part of a reality television show that holds him prisoner. Will Truman realise before it's too late to escape to Fiji and find the woman he remembers from his college days? In Shutter Island, written by later Calagridis, Teddy Daniels wants to find a missing person. Shutter Island has another great example of obstacles. Teddy Daniels is unable to find the missing person on Shutter Island, as she doesn't exist. This obstacle isn't properly revealed until the end of the film, but it keeps Teddy Daniels motivated to find her. This goes back to the earlier point that I made, where the protagonist doesn't need to overcome their obstacle, the drama comes from them trying to achieve it, which obviously Teddy Daniels is unable to do. And finally, Moneyball, again written by Aaron Sorkin and Stephen Zillane, Billy Bean wants to build a successful baseball team. Billy Bean's attempts to successfully build a baseball team are threatened by the small budget of the team that he's coaching. How is he supposed to recruit top quality players if he can't compete financially? For a little exercise, try and watch a favourite film of yours and see if you can work out what the intentions of the characters are as well as what obstacles stand in their way.